Hey, welcome to the Dog Den. I am Kara Ackerberg. I am an author and advocate for rescue dogs. And this is our dog cast about uh, behavior and training issues. And we try to tackle them in just 10 minutes. And that's done because of the amazing trainer to my, I guess she's to my right. I don't know where she is on. Yeah, anybody. something like that. <laughs> I'm somewhere around here. <laughs> she's somewhere around here. So there she is. So, so, so Crystal, tell us, tell us all about who you are and how amazing you are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm Crystal Dunn and, uh, I am a podcast host for Farfetch Dog Pod, which is all about dog myths and misconceptions. And I've been working with dogs for oh, 15, 16 years now, something like that as a behavior consultant. Okay. So she's the brains of the operation. And today we have this really long, long question. I'm going to look it back up and read it to you. It's a good question, but it's a longy and I could relate to it for sure. Um, so this question comes from Trisha, right? Because it's very yeah. long. Looking mm -hmm. down to the very bottom, I think this is Trisha. So it says, I read that test eight of the CGC test, which is the canine good citizen test. And I remember this part of that test is the quote reaction to another dog skill, which quote demonstrates that the dog can behave politely around other dogs. How it works is two handlers and their dogs approach each other from a distance of about 20 feet, stop, shake hands and exchange pleasantries and continue on for about 10 feet. The dog should show no more than casual interest in each other. Neither dog should go to the other dog or its handler. However, my four to five, four and a half year old dog is pretty reactive to most dogs. I have one of those and it's really difficult to regain her attention when another dog is around. Some dogs, she's just on high alert around, whereas others, she seems to lose her mind, barking, whining, lunging, etc. That's what my mind does. Is there any hope for her? Do you have any tips for correcting and eliminating her over exuberance and her reactivity? I have this question too. I'm all ears. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one because uh, it is the most dreaded test on the CGC test. I've administered that test many, many times, uh, especially in working with therapy dogs. It's often a prerequisite. So um, yeah, uh, everybody dreads that one. And uh First, to answer your question, yes, there's a lot you can do about dog reactivity. Um, can you cure it completely? Uh, in most cases, yeah, you can get a dog through dog reactive behavior uh, completely. Uh, it might take a fair amount of practice. The good news is it's not a hard thing to do. It's just a consistent thing that you have to do. And it's something that you need to know a bit about. Uh, it does really help to have a professional guide you through this process, but I'll do my best today to give you some tips and ideas and sources and things that can certainly get you started. Um, my first go-to is uh, there's a book called BAT 2.0, which is behavior adjustment training 2.0 right, yeah. by, <clears throat> excuse me, by uh, an, a dog trainer named Grisha Stewart. Uh, and um, I believe she's located up in like Alaska now. She's been Seattle. Can we anyway. put that in the, in the notes on this podcast? Sure. Apple. It's a really great guide in understanding reactive behavior of all different types, where it comes from. It's basically the psychology behind the behavior, as well as some really great treatments of it. Um, one thing that I do want to note is that you don't want to correct uh, reactive behavior. It's very tempting to yell at your dog when they are freaking out at another dog, but you're really just amping that up more and adding more negative energy into the already tense equation. So um, it's actually better to kind of be the energy you want to see in your dog, right? If you're mm -hmm. out and you want your dog to be chill, you need to be chill. And that can be really hard when our dogs kind of condition us over lots of repetition on, on walks to be really, really scared of passing other dogs, getting close to other dogs. We also tend to really want to walk into the mouth of madness. We see that dog coming our way and we think, well, this is our chance. Let's see how we do this time. You've got to learn how to do it. So we're going to walk past that dog. Uh, the ironic thing about treating reactive behavior is that it often uh, involves avoiding other dogs more often than it does walking towards them. There are very specific exercises that you can do to desensitize your dog to passing other dogs. And those do have their place in the training routine. But if your dog is already reactive and you're out on a walk and you don't know 
where you're at in the process or you're just starting it, now is not the time to walk directly into the dock. Now is the time to turn around and walk the other way. Because one of the reasons that your dog is reactive on leash is because you have control of the leash. They're tethered to this slow biped that they know limits their control of the situation. Mm -hmm. And they're genuinely scared or they're genuinely excited or they're genuinely protective uh, of them or you or both. There's a lot of reasons a dog is going to bark when they're on the end of a leash. It could be because they're all of these things in one, right? So walking towards the target <laughs> often puts them at higher and higher and higher alert. And in that case, all you're doing is practicing the wrong thing over and over and over again, which does absolutely nothing for any of your training. It just takes you further backwards and further frustrates the dog. So your first goal when you're working with a reactive dog is to earn your trust on leash. And that can take work. That takes leash training basics. That takes obedience basics. It takes the foundation work with your dog that teaches them the common language with you. Um, things like sit, stay, uh, walking with me, um, and, and even tricks can help form that, form that bond that you need with a dog for them to actually trust you enough to walk on a tether with you like a leash without freaking out about their environment. It's also worth saying that every dog is different and that every dog is gonna need different things in this environment. So again, testament to having a professional kind of guide you and custom make your, your training. Um, but when it comes to taking and preparing for the CGC test, a lot of trainers will actually offer classes to help prepare you for this too. So when I was administering CGC tests, I had a six week test or a six week advanced training class that I would put all my CGC hopefuls in um, and literally go through the test one by one and help them work through their challenges. One thing that might surprise you is if you've done a fair amount of legwork on your pre-training and everything, and you've worked through a lot of your reactivity or your dog is at least acclimated to a class environment, which is where a CGC test usually takes place. Um, the test item that usually gets people that they don't expect is the um, walking away from your dog, leaving them with a, a, another person. That has failed more people on the CGC test, I think, wow. in my experience, than even the dog to dog passing. Because typically, if you're taking your advanced training class and everything, you're already doing dog to dog passes. And, and if you're hoping to, to at home train and prep your dog for CGC, um, you need to be prepared to do a lot of your training in a park environment, in a pet store environment, and things like that. So that 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 kind of class surrounded by people and dogs environment looks a little bit more normal to them because you can get everything perfect at home. But as soon as you get into that environment, your dog is going to be like, nope, not the same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Yeah. Good. That was super helpful for those of us with um, reactive dogs. Yeah. Keep it's looking on it. There's some really great um, programs out there now too. It's come a long way. There's a, I always plug uh, an organization here in Austin. It's a nonprofit called Every Dog. Their whole focus is equity and dog training. Um, so it's really, really great that they're trying to get those services out to people who have tighter budgets and maybe no budget Do they have at all. that online? So there's, and they have a... We they, have, too. <laughs> they have a wonderful support group for people with reactive dogs, which sounds like, you know, a support group, but no, yeah, you need a support group sometimes just to talk about your experience and what other people are doing and, you know, how they're managing that dog. And you get a lot of really great ideas from that and training tips and stuff too. So I highly encourage anybody with reactive dog to check that out. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. So that was quick. So if you guys have questions, if you have a question you would like Crystal to answer, um, anything, behavior, training, having to do with dogs, <laughs> no cat stuff, right? I mean, it's, I can, I no. I mean, I like cats. <laughs> I love cats, but training them is a whole other, <laughs> whole other area of ex expertise. Good. But if you have questions, you can um, put them right here on the farfetchedpodcast.com. Uh, on this actual podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can message me directly at carawrites.com or find me on Facebook. I'm all over Facebook. Um, or you can find Crystal. Where can they find you? I'm at Farfetch Pod on all the socials. And uh, you can email me at farfetchedpod at gmail.com. Yep. 
So bring it on. We need some new questions. Bring it on. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time. Okay. Bye.